Good morning students. I am so happy to have you all here. Are you all excited? So let's start our first chapter, Nutrition in Plants. Before we start our chapter, let us first study what is nutrition. From class 3 we are studying all living things need food. Now, why do they need food? All living things need food for energy. And this energy they use for their growth and development. There is a scientific term given to this process and the term is nutrition. The process of taking food by an organism for energy is called nutrition. Now why do we need the energy? We need energy to do different kinds of activity. Second, to repair the damaged cells present in our body. There are two modes of nutrition. Autotrophs heterotrophs. Now to understand the modes of nutrition, let us see this diagram. It's a diagram of a food chain. Now what is a food chain? Stop. Pause the video over here. If you know the answer, leave in the comment section. And if you don't know the answer, don't worry, I will tell you the answer. Food chain is a chain which tells who eats whom. A lion is the king of jungle and he can eat whatever he wants. But lion's favorite food is fox. Same way as you are loves to eat chocolates, a lion loves to eat fox. So lion's foods come from fox. Fox loves to eat a rabbit. And we all know rabbit's favorite food is carrot. And carrots comes from the plants. So we can say animals directly or indirectly depends on plants or other animals for their food. And this mode of nutrition is known as heterotopic mode of nutrition. Children, now we will see what is autotropic mode of nutrition. Here auto means self, trops means to nourish. Organism, those who can make their own food or can nourish themselves are known as autotrophs. Plants are known as autotrophs because they can prepare their own food by the process called photosynthesis. The word photosynthesis can be separated to form two smaller words. First, photo which means light. Second, Synthesis, which means to produce. As the plants are producing the food in the presence of sunlight, the process is known as photosynthesis. Now let us understand the process of photosynthesis through a diagram. Photosynthesis occurs in green leaves. Why in green leaves? Because leaves have a substance green in color called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll helps to trap the sunlight. The second ingredient required for photosynthesis is water. Plants absorb water for photosynthesis through roots. Now what is the product? Plant uses carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight to produce glucose. And glucose is the form of energy for the plants. The byproduct produced during photosynthesis is oxygen. Oxygen is vital for all other living organisms. A leaf releases oxygen in the air through tiny pores or holes present on the lower surface of the leaf called stomata. So we can see that a leaf breathes through stomata. Now, let us see the structure of stomata. Stomatas look like tiny pores. The opening and closing of stomata is controlled by two cells called guard cells. Guard cell controls the opening and closing of stomatal pores. Now, these guard cells have a green colored structure called chloroplast. Chloroplast contains chlorophyll. Now, when a stomatal pores open, 
When there is water in guard cell, the stomatal pores open. And when there is no water in the guard cells, the stomatal pores closes and the exchange of gases stops. Children, see what I have? I have two leaves having different color. Can you see the first leaf? It's purple in color. And second leaf, it is brown in color. So, one question for you all. Again, if you know the answer, write it down in the comment section. If a leaf is not having green color, can it produce photosynthesis? What do you all think? How many of you say yes, they can? And how many of you say no, they can't? I'm giving you some time. Think. Your time is over. The answer is yes, even the leaves having color other than green can perform photosynthesis. They have chlorophyll, but the amount of chlorophyll is very less and is overlapped by the other colors. The next topic. Synthesis of plant foods other than simple carbohydrate or glucose. We know that plant produce glucose as a source of energy. But there are some other products also which is produced during photosynthesis. The first example is starch. The extra glucose is stored in the form of starch. Plant produce glucose as I told you. Half of the glucose is used for the development while extra is stored in the form of starch. Now where do the plants store the starch? They store this extra starch in different parts of the body like leaves, stem, fruits and flower. Children, guess the name of these vegetables? I know you know. This is carrot and this is potato. Now there is a question. question. Just a last question. Okay. Now tell me Carrot is which part of the plant? And potato is which part of a plant? Take your time. If you know the answer, write it down in the comment section. Okay, over. Carrot is root and potato is a stem. Plants store extra starch in the root and stem and we eat them as vegetables. Children, do you know what is this? It's a bottle of mustard oil. We use mustard oil for cooking. Now, from where does a mustard oil come? Mustard oil is extracted from mustard seeds. These are mustard seeds from which mustard oil is extracted. And hence we can say that plants make oils as food and store them in the seeds. Let's move to the next point. Plants make proteins as food. During photosynthesis, when plant absorb water from the soil, it also absorbs nitrate. And this nitrate is used to make amino acid. And further, this amino acid is used to make protein. Now the last point. Plants make vitamins as food. Vitamins are complex structure and is produced by plants only. Animals and humans cannot produce vitamins. Large amount of vitamins is present in fruits and vegetables. Students, you will be surprised to know that there are few plants who shows heterotrophic mode of nutrition. That means they depend on other plants or animal for their food. So let us see the different modes of heterotrophic nutrition in plants. Now let us check few heterotrophic examples in plant. The first example is parasites. A cascuta is known as parasite. Why cascuta plant is known as parasite? Because it is yellow in color and do not have chlorophyll. As a cascuta plant don't have a chlorophyll, it cannot perform photosynthesis. So to survive, cascuta plant also needs energy. Now from where a cascuta plant gets energy? 
cascuta plant grows on other living plant they climb over the other plant and develop special roots which get stick to the body of other plant and absorb all the nutrients from the host plant this way a cascuta plant derive its nutrition from other living plant as a cascuta plant is causing harm to other plant it is known as parasites second mode saprophytes those non green plants which obtain their food from dead and decaying organism are called saprophytes for example mushrooms mushrooms are white in color and do not have chlorophyll as they don't have chlorophyll they cannot perform photosynthesis third mode of nutrition insectivorous plants the plants who obtain their energy partially from photosynthesis and partially from insects are called insectivorous plants you must be thinking are plants bhi insect khate hain yes even plants are carnivores now let us see few examples venus fly trap picture plant i am sharing a video of venus fly trap plant and picture plant go through the video symbiotic plants before studying about symbiotic plants let us first see what is symbiosis relationship when two different plants living together and depends on each other for the food are known as symbiosis relationship in lichens the two plants which lives together and depend on each other for the food are fungi and algae algae being autotrophic in nature makes food and supply it to fungus whereas fungi being saprophyte cannot make its own food so it takes the food from the algae and in return it absorbs the minerals and transfer it to the algae so that algae can use those minerals for photosynthesis another example is leguminous plant and rhizobium rhizobium is a name of bacteria which lives in the root of leguminous plants and helps the plant to absorb the nitrogen from the soil now what does a plant in return gives to the rhizobium rhizobium absorb prepared food from the plant in this way rhizobium and leguminous plants help each other in obtaining their food let's move to the next topic photosynthesis in cactus and algae before starting our topic let us check the picture of cactus cactus is a desert plant and the leaves of cactus plant is converted into spines just to reduce the water loss as in desert there is a scarcity of water so now how cactus will going to perform photosynthesis in cactus photosynthesis is performed by green stem as as i said green stem that means in cactus chlorophyll is present in stem and because of the presence of chlorophyll stem performs the photosynthesis in cactus algae are simple plant like organism they are green in color because they have chlorophyll but they are different from plants they don't have roots stems and leaves i have recorded a video of algae growing on a wet wall kindly check it out children have you ever noticed this type of slimy green patches growing on wet walls or floating over lake or pond this is called algae 
algae are simple organism and looks like green in color as they have chlorophyll and they can perform photosynthesis and hence they are autotrophic in nature. Children, I have told you during the photosynthesis, plant absorbs water and minerals from the soil. Water it uses for photosynthesis whereas minerals are used by the plant for its growth and development. Now, when a plant grow in soil, they absorb the mineral. As a result, the concentration of the minerals or the content of the minerals in the soil decreases. Now, what is the solution? Solution is there. The nutrients in the soil can be replenished by adding manure and fertilizers. Manure and fertilizers are plant nutrients and are generally added in soil to increase the mineral content of the soil so that the fertility of the soil can be maintained. Basically, there are three minerals which are vital for plant. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These three minerals are very important for plants as they directly help in the growth and development of the plant. There are two types of fertilizers. NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium and urea. NPK provide three nutrients. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Whereas urea only provides nitrogen. Second method to replenish minerals in soil is growing leguminous plants. Leguminous roots have rhizobium bacteria, a special bacteria which can fix atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and supply to the plants in the form of nitrates. And nitrates is used by the plants to make amino acid and further convert them into proteins. I am sharing a video of leguminous plant and rhizobium bacteria. Animal cell. The outermost covering of the cell which protects the cell is called cell membrane. Nucleus. Nucleus is known as the brain of the cell, it decides the activity of a cell. Mitochondria. Mitochondria is a powerhouse of a cell. It provides energy to the cell to perform activities. Cytoplasm. The fluid of the cell in which nucleus mitochondria floats is called cytoplasm. Vacuole. Vacuole is a place where a cell stores its waste product. Plant cell. Cell membrane. The outer covering of a cell is called cell membrane. Plant cell has extra covering for extra protection and this layer is called cell wall. A plant cell also has nucleus. Again, in plant cell also, nucleus acts like the brain of the cell. Vacuole. Plant cell have a large vacuole as compared to animal cell where it store its waste product. Cytoplasm. The fluid of the cell is called cytoplasm. Chloroplast. It is unique. Why? Because animal cells don't have chloroplast. The chloroplast is present in plant cell. It contains chlorophyll which helps in photosynthesis. Children, we are done with the explanation of the chapter. I hope you all have enjoyed the video and have learned some important things. See you in my next class.